Hello Church, Pastor Laramie here, and this is our third part in our four-part series. Well, what it looks like is going to be four parts. I guess it kind of depends on how the discussions go. We may add on to the tail end of this, but this is the third part in our series about biblical family order. Our first discussion was on marriage and how it reflects Christ's relationship with his bride. I feel like uh, that video went well. I pray that it's a blessing for you. Uh, if you haven't watched it, feel free to go back and watch it as part of this series. The next discussion we had was on biblical manhood or uh, the role of the husband and within the home. And this video will be about uh, womanhood. And uh, the ap video after that will discuss parenthood and parenting uh, from a gospel perspective. And so. I pray that the video about manhood was helpful. Like I said, it was kind of an introductory topic and, you know, people have written thick books on the topic. So I, I don't expect the, a 10 minute video to uh, do justice to the, the full on topic. But I do hope it kind of generated some thoughts, kind of made you think about some things. And that's my goal with this video as well. It's more these two videos that I'm doing on manhood and womanhood are almost just an expansion of the initial video that I did with uh, marriage. And so what is uh, biblical womanhood? What makes a biblical wife? Where, where in scripture do we see this? Um, you know, how does this complement the role of the husband? That type of thing. Um, I don't know if all those questions are going to get answered in this time, but my goal is to, to bring you to a better understanding of what God's word says in his scriptures. Uh, to draw you closer to him to do some study for yourself But just like we did with the man uh, we are going back to Genesis in chapter 2 and and talking about the woman uh, So with man it said that he was given dominion to name the creatures to expand the borders to protect and to serve or to work and to keep the garden He was placed in the garden the woman was taken from his side uh, We know all of these things that have occurred uh, man names woman tell you know calls her isha which means woman uh you know he is man she is woman uh this word woman actually comes from it's an english i guess derivative of the word that we or we have man and then woman actually comes from the words that mean with man uh, is where the the english word woman comes from and so it's it's almost like it's a it's an old english term that was used for you know man with woman or man, man with, and then with man for the woman, and it just—that's why we believe it, it carries that women uh, type of sound is the with man. Uh, and so, anyways, little useless piece of trivia for you, but yes, biblical womanhood, the wife, uh, her role within the home. Uh, what role does she play? Well, she is called the help meet, not the help, uh, help or helper, the suitable helper. Uh, this phrase carries the meaning of where there is lack, she comes in to, to fill that role. Uh, the man is the one who was given the, the authority and the, the image bearing representative, this vice regent role was given to the man to go out and, and uh, take dominion of all the creation, expand the borders of the garden. Uh, do as God would do as he was on the earth as he is a life-giving creature We are to as men. We're supposed to have that same role But man could not do that on his own. He was unable to man. It is not good for man to be alone is what God said and so Man had nobody in creation and so God put him to sleep took from his side fashioned woman made her uh, out of his side exactly what he needed to complete and perfectly uh, do the role that he was called to in uh, expanding the borders of, of the garden and to bring forth life to all of creation. He could not do that without woman, right? It was He was unable to. He needed a helper suitable for him. Now, this word helper, as some of you may know, is the same word that's used to describe the Holy Spirit, right? This is not a term of enslavement or indentured servanthood or anything like that. This is a, a word that is used to describe the Holy Spirit as the helper. And so this term carries weight in that fashion. It's not uh, the help, right? Like a, uh, you know, like the movie, the help. It's not like that. This is someone who comes alongside, who helps you do what you're in intended to do. God has given man a specific role to fulfill and he cannot do it without his wife. 
And so that that's the importance. That's the value in the wife's role is that she comes alongside her husband, compliments him in that fashion where uh, where he is lacking, she brings in completion to that. She makes him whole. Uh, our better half, this is where this phrase comes from. And so that's that's the woman's role. She is to help her husband. Now, what is she to help her husband do? Fulfill all that he has been commanded to do, right? If he is the head of the home, uh, she's not the neck, as most people say. She is the helper, right? She is like the body as Christ is to his church, uh, and the church is the one that's going out, you know, preaching the gospel, bringing in the lost, doing all these things after Christ died for her. This is the same type of fashion in which the, the bride and the groom are as with the husband and the wife. She plays a very important role, uh, but a very distinct role from him. Right. So what does that look like? The man is to be the provider for his home. He is supposed, supposed to be the prophet, priest and king within his home. I did not discuss that in the videos prior, but I do think those are important. The man is supposed to be bringing the word to his family, praying on behalf of his family and leading his family in a godly manner. That's his role. Well, the wife is the queen of the home. Right. Every king needs his queen. Right. She's not a, a servant. She's not the peasant girl. She's not the scullery maid. She's none of those things. She is his queen. She is she is everything to him. Uh, he cannot lead his kingdom uh, without her. Uh, he cannot understand fully the things that God has for him without her help. Right. She is his his helper in all things. Uh, you know, she is his his confidant, his encourager, uh, the, the mother of his children the the soother of his soul as he needs help whenever he's out doing the things that he's been called to do uh and, and naturally women want to play that role that's the role that they want uh men go out conquer and you know get they sweat they bleed they 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 do all these things out uh the woman is the keeper of the home she's the one when the, the man wants someone to come home to right he wants to be able to come home to his children to his wife and do the things that he's called to do. Uh, and the wife has her role within managing the home that is vitally important. Um, I, I think a great example of that is uh, when we have uh, our soldiers who uh, go out to war, oftentimes they get married, whether they know the woman or not, they want someone to come home to. Now, does that make that woman any less valuable? No. They're fighting for something. They want to remember what they're fighting for. We're, we're fighting for this family, for, for this um, flourishing in the home, right? We're going to make children. We're going to raise these children. We're going to do all these. There's this, this sacredness, this sanctity within the home that the wife provides for the husband. So he is able to do what he is called to do. And she is able to be this huge influence within her home for her children and for her husband as he goes out not conquering the world but doing the things that God's called him to do she's able to maintain order and love and protection and uh, raise these kids up in a, in a fashion that that glorifies Christ uh, she's submitting her own desires right to, to go conquer the world in and of herself for the sake of the family she is the helper that is able to do that um, and, and a lot of people don't like that. You know, they don't like the idea. Well, why can't the wife go out in the workforce? Well, she can. Uh, she has every uh, ability to do so. But what has God called her to? He has called her to raise children, to f allow these kids to see what, what love is in the home, to manage this home well, uh, not to be raised by other people, but to be raised by her and, and her husband. He is the one going out, providing for the family, allowing this uh, love and structure to be um, to be taken care of. And so that's those are these two complementary roles. They work well together. They've worked for thousands of years. Um, and, and, you know, we may say, well, that's old fashioned. You know, both parents need to work. But I think if we really think about it, if you think about parents, when, when a woman carries a child for nine months and then she births this child, she wants to spend all her time with it. Why? That's how God created her. God created those desires with him. Those are godly desires to spend time with your children, to love on them, to, to, to raise them, to feed them. You know, all it, that's the way that God designed these things to work. And so why do we think we know better than God? Do we need more things? Uh, do we need more bigger houses, more money? No, we don't need any of that. If you ask any child, 
uh, he wants his parents. He wants his love and affection from his parents. And so does that sometimes call the husband to go work a little more than he needs to? Sometimes it might. Uh, but having this, this structure within the home where the, where the wife is managing her home well, as Scripture talks about, being trained by the older women and training the younger women, uh, as well as managing the, the kids until they come of an age to where they go out and seek out their own spouses, uh, is a beautiful thing. And so I feel like I'm kind of rambling at this point, but these are the two roles that, that we see within the home. The husband is the provider. Uh, the prophet, priest, and king, we see the wife as the queen, the helper suitable for him, and the manager of the home. These roles work well together. They're God-ordained, God-designed. They're equal value, equal importance, and they both allow the children to be raised in a godly home that sees Christ as the center. Uh, you see structure. You see stability. You see all these things that allow uh, the family to flourish in the way that they're supposed to. And so with that said, I just pray that this has kind of either encouraged you uh, or reaffirmed some things, or maybe it's caused you to question some things or even question what I'm saying. Uh, I, I really would like to have more discussions on this. Like I said, I believe it's a controversial topic, uh, but it doesn't have to be. It, it can be a topic where we discuss these things. And, uh, and, and so I, my desire is to, to kind of um, bring scripture to bear and allow it to to speak for us i do believe this is clearly laid out for us in genesis 2 um, in, in the creation account and then we see it laid out more clearly in ephesians 5 and 6 uh, and, and in first peter 3 among other places uh, but but yeah let's let's have that discussion and until next time as as always i pray this has been a blessing to you and we look forward to seeing you again god bless